Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. It's spring in Ontario right now and the steelhead are running. This week we're going to talk about a special nymphing technique called Euro Nymphing. Graham Bristol from a Perfect Drift Guide Company is here to show us exactly how it's done. We'll also talk about equipment, flies and techniques. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Ontario, yours to discover, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Able Reels, Ross Reels, Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. In my travels, I'm asked on a regular basis, what is my favorite fish? Without hesitation, I say the steelhead. The very first time I ever fished over 40 years ago, I hooked a steelhead and I fell in love with them ever since. Migratory rainbow trout, called steelhead, are highly prized trophies. They're beautiful and they become leaping titans when hooked. For many anglers, steelhead is the ultimate challenge. The term steelhead describes a rainbow trout that was born in a stream, migrated to the sea, and returned to the stream as an adult to spawn. I live in the heart of steelhead country and I'm visiting one of my home streams, the Credit River in Mississauga, Ontario. The Credit River is only two hours from the U.S. border at Buffalo, New York, and only four hours from the border at Detroit, Michigan. I'll be fishing public waters with a Perfect Drift Guide Company owner, Graham Bristol, and also joining me today and co-hosting with me is TV fishing personality, Mark Melnick. So we got a, about a, a six foot of a tapered leader down to um, our, uh, what we call a cider. This is a, a bicolor or two color cider. From here, we've basically got a straight uh, eight pound tippet all the way down to the first fly. Which uh, looks like you got about another four feet there. And, right? then, and then from there, we've got another, and you, you can make this a little bit longer. A lot of guys go with about 30 inches or so, but because the water's dirty today, I'm going to keep it short and keep okay. it close together so that, right. that way they're both close in that okay. strike zone near the bottom. All right. Both flies are weighted. So even this one here has got some lead wrapped around okay. uh, a sort of a jig hook. So it should ride yeah. kind of uh, point up so okay. it won't get quite a snag. Right. And uh, they've been hot on this. And as the water clears, generally I go more towards nymphs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as the water stays dirty, I sort yeah. of stick with egg patterns. And egg but patterns we, and bubble we, gum worms. Yeah, yeah. We, we can change and we can make some adjustments as yeah. well too. But that's your okay. basic setup. You're going to... Rotate your, your shoulders, mm -hmm. face your target, and then you're gonna flip it. Right. And you're gonna lift the rod tip as the cider comes closer. And you're just gonna watch that cider. You're gonna sort of hover it off the bottom. If you're constantly tick, 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 you can lift it up a little higher. The nice thing with this is, and, and you're basically gonna run all the way down. If it stops, pauses, or pulls, you're just gonna give it a, a little flick, and hopefully it's a fish. The nice thing with this I, is I can fish that 12 inches of water yes. with the okay. same setup. Um, I don't need to adjust an indicator at all. All I need to do is, is hang it a little higher off the water. Yep. And that's the basics behind it. Although Graham has shown us how to use a cider to detect a hit, the technique can also be used with an indicator. 
Instead of allowing the indicator to float on the water, lift it off and follow along with the rod tip. Watch as Colin McEwen uses the same technique to take a steelhead on a previous show. Hit that. Oh, that's, that's a big even one. bigger. That's a bigger fish. Oh my goodness, look at this thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this thing go. That fish has a lot of fight in it. This is a really strong fish. I just can't believe the power. Look at it. Oh, look at him there. As soon as you move, Jeff, he sees it and he goes. Jeez. <laughs> That's incredible. Let him go. Oh, that's incredible. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. That was uh, a battle royale. Sometime around 1876, the first steelhead eggs were transported from the McLeod River in California to the Great Lakes and the resulting par were stocked in Michigan's Osabo River. This initial stocking turned out to be a huge success and soon after, Ohio, Wisconsin, New York, Pennsylvania and Ontario-based sportsman groups began to follow suit. By the 1960s, the steelhead had taken hold and occupied a niche in all of the five Great Lakes, providing sport to anglers well beyond what anyone involved in the initial planning could have anticipated. So I've been in business now for about uh, 13 years, uh, the last six years as a full-time guide and I guide uh, a lot of uh, Southern Ontario's uh, top uh, or best uh, trout and steelhead rivers. Um, there's about 13 different rivers that I guide and uh, they can range anywhere from large steelhead rivers to uh, small little brook trout streams. Look how purple she is, huh? And the water's cold enough that you can play this fish. You're not going to exhaust her. Um. Hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Perfect. Fits. That's up to you. All right. Good job, man. Nice fish. Unlike Pacific salmon, all steelhead don't die after spawning. And some individuals may spawn three or four times before they finally expire. The oldest fish are usually the biggest. The rainbow trout modifies behavior and survival strategies to suit its surroundings. For example, although most steelheads spawn in the spring, the exact timing varies considerably. There's also great variation as to when adults return to the spawning streams. In the case of Great Lake tributaries, water levels and temperature will dictate when the fish enter the river. It is generally believed if you fish two days after a rain, the river levels are dropping and the fish will have entered the river and are most active. When water levels drop too low, the fish become spooky and harder to take. Let's talk a little bit about the equipment I used this week. First off, my rod. It's an 11 foot number seven switch rod. What is a switch rod to the beginners in the, in the audience is a cross between a single handed rod and a double handed rod. They're very popular right now with steelheaders. My reel, the most important part of this reel is the drag system. You've got to have a really good drag system for steelhead. They really will test your equipment. My line, 
Now, you can get an actual switch line that's rated for these rods, or if you'd like, what I like to do is align two lines heavier than what the rod is. So this is a number seven. I use a number nine weight, weight forward line, and it really loads nicely. And you, you can do this nymphing technique very easily with this line. That is a beautiful fish, Mark. That, that is a beautiful fish. I think he's on that egg pattern I gave you, yes. Mark, on the top fly. Oh. You hit hard? No, very, no, very, very subtle. Very subtle, eh? That one looks like a drop back. It's, a, it's spent, yeah. It's pretty, pretty light colored, though, so maybe not. Lead him to me, Mark. There we go. That's a beauty, Mark. Oh, it's a beauty, Mark. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Look at it. That's a lovely fish. That's a long fish. That's, yeah, that's that is fish. a really long fish. All right, buddy. That's awesome. All right. Couldn't have done it without you guys. I promise you that. <laughs> oh. I promise you that. Look at how long that fish is. That is a big steelhead. That's a big steelhead. That's, that's a, how, how big would you say? I'd say at least six, if not somewhere between six and eight, maybe even seven. It's a good fish. Now, this is a Celted fish, which that means this fish has already spawned and is on its way back to the, to the lake and is feeding heavily. That's why Mark hit it and it hit so, you know. It, so well. It so well and, 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 and fought crazy. Great. All right. Should we let her go? Yeah, let her go, yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. Beautiful. <laughs> well done. There she goes. Well done, sir. Well Great done. Great job, guys. Yeah. Great job. Great. Awesome, Mark. Great technique. This is a, just a wonderful technique. Uh, it, 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 anything that touches your line, you're going to see it in a second with this technique. You're going to see it. And that's that, why you took that fish. Yep. They're notoriously light hitters. It's not whammo, notoriously light. So you're going to see exactly when your indicator moves. Absolutely. Beautiful. Fish Beautiful. Fish gone. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. The best places to find fish are in current seams. A seam is where two currents of differing speed meet. Fish will lay in the slower of the two currents, but nearer the fast. An easy way to determine where the seams are is to follow where the foam or the bubbles go. Another area that is a fish attractor would be a rock. The current breaks around the rock and creates a seam. Also, fish will hold directly in front of the rock in the hydro cushion that is created when the water is deflected around. Always try in front of a rock as well as behind. The number one fly you choose when you come steelheading are yarn flies or egg flies. You'll see that I have a variety of colors here. This is for different water conditions. For instance, if the water is cloudy and, and low visibility, I would go to a bright chartreuse color or bright red color and also, I would make it a larger egg rather than a smaller egg. As the water clears, I might go to a yellow egg or peach colored or orange. And then when you get into clear water, then I would go with the white. Water clarity does dictate what fly you use. Now, the second fly that I would use, and it's become quite popular. They're called bubblegum worms. And what they are is, is just chenille, in the color of bubblegum. And the steelheads seem to really like it. And if the water's off colored, they'll eat them, eat them readily. 
Uh, one problem is you will get suckers too at the, at the same time, but the suckers are always in the same spot that the steelhead are. I've got some woolly worms here, which have worked for me over the years and usually in clearer water because they're a stonefly imitation. I have some really bright colored orange flies here for the colored water. And then just some flies that I think look kind of interesting. My third box is my nymph box. And these are your standard uh, hare's ear nymphs, pheasant tails. And then generally when the water clears and it starts to warm up and you start to get a mayfly hatch, the steelhead will turn on to these flies. One of the problems you're gonna run into with this Euro nymphing setup is the long leaders and not much fly line out from the end of the rod. And what happens is you have a lot of hard, a hard time casting. And you can see right here, I, I, got, I can't load the rod. So what we do in order to cast upstream is cast back and allow the fly line or, or the leader itself to land on the water. Then all we do is punch it up like that. Now what happens when it grabs the water here, it loads the rod. It actually pulls on the rod, and when you cast up, then you can, you can get it to where you want to go. So what I have to do is I, a couple times up here, get, get it going, cast it back straight, and then straight back up this way, and you'll cast every time like that. There we go. Yeah, fish. Fish on. Nice. When fishing in the spring as we are, you will always catch suckers. They have it the same water as the steelhead do. They can be a curse or they can be a blessing. In my case, I want to keep it real and I'm having a tough day. So they're a blessing to me. They're giving me some action. You want a picture? <laughs> right on the top of the nose. That's where I finally get most of those yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. They, they nose themselves right into it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it yeah. feels like another bugle trout. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, just just not going crazy enough. Yeah, hey, there he goes. Do you want me to land that one for you? No, I can got it. You got it? Now, this, this is another sucker, but they hit exactly the same way as any steelhead will. Uh, this new technique for me, this is uh, excellent practice for me. I'm feeling the actual fly tick on the bottom. This is, this, is, this is a real good learning curve for me. And this is the one thing about springtime fishing. You run into a lot of suckers. Oops, and that just cost me a fly. <laughs> you don't want to know gotta, how many flies I've lost on suckers. i guide for another weighted fly. <laughs> I've lost too many on suckers. Fish on. Yep. Fish. Big one. It took uh, took the fly pretty hard. I'm not sure what fly it's on, but it's on. I just got to watch. He's going for the wood down on the other side there, so. The water's warming up, isn't it, Graham? And yeah. it's making the fish more active. Yeah, I think they're definitely. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Whoa. Oh, nice. yeah, that's a thick fish. Yeah, it's a good one. I don't want to get him down there. I want to get him before he gets down there. I don't know if he's ready to go yet, Brian, but. 
going back up the river. What a nice fish, Graham. Yeah, it's a good one. What a nice fish. I can see it plain as day right here. Oh, yeah. Just sitting in the fast water. Good yay, man, yes. Yay. Good night Way job, to go, Brian. Brian. Good night job. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. Yeah, that's, that's what a, nice a fish. beauty. Another female, too. Yeah, yeah. So now, is, is this a kelp? It looks. Oh, no, you know what? It might be a male, actually. I think this one no, is. No, that's a male, a male yeah. Yeah. I was going to say. Some, got some color. It's got pretty some... thick, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good fish. You wanna... uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a beauty. Look at that. It's a nice, fresh fish. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Huh? And there's the egg pattern, yes. right? Yeah. Same, same uh, egg pattern, egg, same color we got uh, the last one on. Yep. That's a beauty. That's a beaut. Yes, sir. And flies clear. Oh, wow. Awesome. A tailing glove comes in handy. Oh, absolutely. And it yeah. doesn't hurt the fish. Nope. It's made of cotton. It doesn't hurt the fish. Yeah. And you wet your hands first, so yep. it keeps the slime on. That's oh, a what a lovely fish. What a lovely fish. This Euro technique is deadly. You got to try it. Let's, let's let this one go. All right, she's ready to, he's yeah. ready to go, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's going to sit there and sulk for a bit. Yep. You know what? That's all right. Yeah, that's, that's... all right. Put it put it where it's, it's protected. It's not going to get washed downstream. Yep. It's a healthy fish. Yes. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and learned something about this tremendous technique called Euro nymphing. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of... Ontario, yours to discover. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Scientific Anglers. Able Reels. Ross Reels, Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. To learn more about the new Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.